The Chase In last week's Parsha, Yaakov got the blessings from his father Yitzchak. Esav felt so cheated that he wanted to kill his brother Yaakov. Revenge! cried Esav. I will finish off my brother Yaakov once and for all. Yaakov ran for his life. His parents instructed him to go to Haran, the birthplace of his mother Rivka. Yaakov sneaked out of town quietly, but somehow Esav found out. He sent his son Eliphaz on a mission to kill his uncle Yaakov. Your money or your life? Eliphaz didn't really want to harm his uncle, but he had no choice. Armed and determined, Eliphaz soon caught up with Yaakov and threatened to kill him. Wait, Eliphaz, said Yaakov. Please don't kill me. I, I have an idea. Take all my money. Without money, I'm worthless, like a dead man. Eliphaz agreed happily. He robbed Yaakov of everything, including all the expensive gifts he had prepared for his future wife. But Yaakov was just thankful to be alive. Holy Dreams On his way to Haran, Yaakov stopped at Mount Moriah. There he prayed Ma'ariv, the evening prayer, and prepared to go to sleep. During the night, Yaakov had a prophetic dream. He had a vision of a huge ladder that stretched all the way to heaven, and Malachi angels were going up and down the ladder. Then Hashem spoke to Yaakov in his dream. I am the God of Abraham and Yitzchak. This land that you rest upon, I will give to you and your descendants. Your offspring will be as many as the dust of the land. May you have strength and burst forward with blessings in all directions, west, east, north, and south. I will be with you and protect you wherever you go. You will return home safely. Gateway to Heaven When Yaakov awoke, he understood that this was more than a dream. Yaakov exclaimed, What an amazing vision! I had no idea that this is the gateway to heaven. How could I have slept on such holy ground? Indeed, the Beis HaMikdash, the holy temple, would someday be built on that very same spot. Yaakov made a promise to Hashem. If you will protect me while I'm in Haran and give me bread to eat and clothing to wear, I will give plenty of tzedakah, charity, from everything I earn. Well done! Yaakov continued his journey and arrived at the well near Haran. He noticed a large stone covering its opening. Because the stone was too heavy for one person to lift, the shepherds waited until everyone had gathered, so together they could lift the massive stone. Where are you from? Yaakov asked the shepherds. We're, We're from, from here, here, from Choron, they replied. Great! Do you know Lavan? Lavan? Sure we know him! Look, here comes his daughter Rachel! It was true. Rachel was a shepherdess, and she was coming towards the well with her flock of sheep. <laughs> <laughs> Yaakov had a strong feeling that she was to be his intended wife, so he stepped forward to help, and with ease, Yaakov single-handedly lifted the huge stone off the well. Oh. Oh. Amazing! He then proceeded to give water to Rachel's sheep. With tears in his eyes, Yaakov introduced himself to Rachel. I am your cousin, Yaakov. 
My mother, Rivka, is your father's sister. I have come here from the faraway land of Canaan. Rachel ran off to tell her father, Lava, the exciting news. Father, you won't believe this. I met this man at the well, and he lived at the rock all by himself. And there is so much more to tell you. Picking Pockets Lavan immediately ran to greet Yaakov and gave him a big hug and kiss. Wasn't that sweet? Well, not really. Lavan actually hugged him so that he could check Yaakov's money belt. He remembered how Avraham's servant Eliezer had come to Haran with ten camels stacked high with jewels and riches. So he thought, Hmm, if the servants of that family can bring such expensive gifts when they travel here, imagine what Yitzhak's own son must have with him. Yaakov sadly proceeded to tell Lavan how he was forced to give away all the gifts and money to his nephew Eliphaz. Disappointed, Lavan told Yaakov, Well, what are relatives for? Stay in my house for a month and take care of my sheep. Of course, I can't expect you to work for free, Yaakov, so let's discuss your salary. A Tale of Two Sisters Lavan had two daughters. Rachel was beautiful, and her older sister Leah was also beautiful, but her <laughs> eyes were red and swollen from crying. Yaakov said to Lavan, What I really want as a salary for my work is to marry Rachel, your daughter, the younger one. I'll work seven years for her. Lavan happily agreed to Yaakov's request. <laughs> I am so very smart, a genius. <laughs> Outstanding in his field. True to his promise, Yaakov cared for Lavan's flocks for seven years. Year after year, he faithfully tended to the sheep in the scorching hot summer days and in the freezing winter nights. Lavan's sheep grew and multiplied under Yaakov's steady hand. And Lavan? He just took it easy and enjoyed counting all the money he made. Thanks to Yaakov. Ah, this is the good life. The Bride Swap The day of the wedding was approaching. Yaakov wanted to make sure that he wouldn't be tricked by the sly Lavan. So he told Rachel, Just to be on the safe side, here's a secret code. Flip Kachucha. Under the chuppah, wedding canopy, your face will be covered with a veil, and I won't be able to see who you are. You'll tell me the secret code, and I will know for sure that it's you, Rachel. Finally, it was the day of the grand wedding! <music> Laban invited everyone in town to the festivities, but he had a little trick up his sleeve. He had secretly done a bride swap. Now, Leah is the bride. Rachel did not want to embarrass her older sister, so right before the wedding ceremony, she approached her sister and whispered, My dear sister Leah, this is the secret code. <laughs> what a special woman Rachel was. She was willing to give up marrying Yaakov just so Leah wouldn't be embarrassed in public. Who's who at the wedding? The chuppah was set, with the bride covered by the veil and the groom standing next to her. The password, please, said Yaakov to the bride, and the bride whispered the secret code. <laughs> Yaakov was now convinced that his bride was Rachel, and the wedding began. It was an amazing celebration! Just one slight problem. Yaakov actually married Leah and not Rachel. <gasps> the next morning, when Yaakov found out the truth, he ran to his father-in-law. Lavan, what have you done? I'd worked for Rachel all these years. Why did you trick me? 
Lavan answered, Well, around here, nobody marries off a younger daughter before her elder sister. But all right, in a week you can marry Rachel too, if you will work for me for another seven years. Without any hesitation, Yaakov agreed. He married Rachel the very next week. He kept his word to Lavan and worked hard, tending his sheep for another seven years. The Next Generation Soon after their marriage, Leah began having children, four sons in a row. She named them Ruvain, Shimon, Levi, and Yehuda. Meanwhile, Rachel had no children at all, which made her very unhappy and also quite jealous. Yaakov, pray for me that I shall have children, begged Rachel. Without children, life is meaningless. It's not up to me, Rachel. Hashem will choose whether to bless you with a child, answered Yaakov. Okay, Yaakov, so I want you to marry my maidservant, Bilha. Perhaps Hashem will then have mercy on me, and I will merit to have a family of my own. Just as Rachel had advised, Yaakov married Bilha, and she gave birth to two sons. Rachel named them Dun and Naphtali. Leah also gave her maidservant, Zilpah, to Yaakov as a wife. Zilpah gave birth to two sons, whom Leah named God and Usher. After that, Leah had another two sons, Yisachar and Zavulan, and finally, a daughter by the name of Dina. Still, Rachel was childless. How much longer could she possibly wait while everyone else was blessed with children? Finally, after so many years of waiting, Rachel had a son. She was a mother at last. She named her son Yosef. Eventually, she would also have a second son named Benjamin. By now, Yaakov had quite a large family, four wives, eleven sons, and one daughter. He had established his family in Haran, but they would soon be moving on. Speckled and Spotted Yaakov was now ready to go back home. So he approached his boss, Lavan the cheater, and said, It's time for me to move on. Let me take my wives and children and go back home. Lavan replied, All right, let's figure out what I owe you. Let's see. You worked here for 14 years so you could marry my two daughters. How much should I pay you? Yaakov thought, Rather than gold or silver, I will request just a few sheep, and with Hashem's help, I can still make a profit. So Yaakov replied, I'll take all of the speckled and spotted goats and brown sheep that will be born this season. <laughs> Lavan thought, <laughs> Sounds like a great deal for me. That means he will get just a few goats and sheep. I can't believe how terrible a businessman that son-in-law of mine is here. It's a deal replied Lavan as he smiled his wicked smile. <laughs> but to Lavan's surprise, that season many of the newborn goats indeed had spots, and almost all of the baby sheep were brown. When Yaakov was ready to claim his payment, the wicked Lavan panicked and cried, Hold it! I'm the one who's supposed to get these brown and spotted animals. You picked something else. Although Yaakov knew that Lavan was playing tricks with him, he went along with it anyway. Okay, I'll take the animals with stripes instead. You got it. Soon enough, all the newborn animals came out with stripes. <laughs> Lavan was beside himself. Uh-huh. W- what's going on? I must have made a mistake. Let's make a new agreement. So it went, on and on and on. In the end, Lavan changed his mind 100 times. In spite of the cheater Lavan, and of course with plenty of help from Hashem, 
Yaakov was blessed, and he became a very, very wealthy man. The Blessed Shepherd Yaakov continued to faithfully tend to Lavan's sheep, day in and day out, in the scorching hot sun during the day, in the freezing wind and rain at night. But Lavan was meaner than ever. One day Hashem called out to Yaakov, Return to the house of your parents, to your birthplace. I will protect you. Yaakov started to make plans for his grand exit from Lavan's place. But how? It seemed that Lavan would never willingly let Yaakov's family leave. There was only one solution. The family would have to sneak away when Lavan wasn't looking. Give it up! Yaakov's opportunity finally came when Lavan left on a three-day trip. Yaakov gathered his four wives, eleven sons, and one daughter, and all of their possessions, and secretly fled Lavan's house. Rachel saw a golden opportunity to do something she had wanted to do for a long time. Get rid of the idols in her father's house. She secretly collected them and hid them under the saddle of her camel. On the third day, Lavan found out that Yaakov, Rachel, Leah, Bilha, Zilpa, Ruvain, Shimon, Levi, Yehuda, Don, Naphtali, Yisachar, Zebulun, God, Usher, Yosef, and Dina had all run off. He was furious. He was fuming. Lavan quickly ran out and chased after them. <laughs> On the way, he was planning how he would punish Yaakov when he caught up with him. But Hashem appeared to Lavan in a dream and warned him, Don't you dare harm Yaakov. Lavan had a quick switch of attitude, and when he finally did catch up with Yaakov and his family, he exclaimed, Why did you run away? If you only told me uh, beforehand, I would have made a huge going away party for the family with, with plenty of music. After all, they are my grandchildren. I didn't even have a chance to properly say goodbye and kiss them. Yaakov did not interrupt his father-in-law as Lavan continued berating him. And why did you steal my idols? Yaakov was shocked. I have no idea where your idols are or who stole it, but they are not here. Go ahead and search everywhere. And if you do find it, that person who stole it will die. Lavan proceeded to do a thorough search in all the tents. Meanwhile, Rachel stayed seated on her camel, so Lavan never discovered the idols she had stashed under her saddle. Lavan, Yaakov said bitterly, This is ridiculous! I worked for you faithfully day in, day out for 20 years. Yet, you've cheated me all along. Enough already! Let us go in peace! The Next Generation Soon after their marriage, Leah began having children, four sons in a row. She named them Ruvain, Shimon, Levi, and Yehuda. Meanwhile, Rachel had no children at all, which made her very unhappy and also quite jealous. Yaakov, pray for me that I shall have children, begged Rachel. Without children? Life is meaningless. It's not up to me, Rachel. Hashem will choose whether to bless you with a child, answered Yaakov. Okay, Yaakov. So I want you to marry my maidservant, Bilha. Perhaps Hashem will then have mercy on me, and I will merit to have a family of my own. Just as Rachel had advised, Yaakov married Bilha, and she gave birth to two sons. Rachel named them Dun and Naphtali. Leah also gave her maidservant, Zilpa to Yaakov as a wife. Zilpa gave birth to two sons, whom Leah named God and Usher. After that, Leah had another two sons, Yisachar and Zavulan, and finally, a daughter by the name of Dina. Still
Still, Rachel was childless. How much longer could she possibly wait while everyone else was blessed with children? Finally, after so many years of waiting, Rachel had a son. She was a mother at last. She named her son Yosef. <laughs> Eventually, she would also have a second son named Benjamin. By now, Yaakov had quite a large family. Four wives, 11 sons, and one daughter. He had established his family in Haran, but they would soon be moving on. One big happy family. Yaakov's sons would grow up to become the leaders of the 12 tribes of Israel. And so the teachings and traditions of Abraham, Yitzchak, and Yaakov were passed down to another generation. And the chain of tradition continues unbroken until this very day. What will happen to Yaakov after all these years? Will he meet up with his evil twin brother Esau? Will Esau attempt to kill him? Or will they finally settle their differences? Stay tuned for another exciting episode of Shazak Parsha!